Welcome back, everybody. From Polenta to Panko, the grocery store is filled with foods many of us never try because we just don't know what they are. The dining diva Molly Fowler is back to show us what to do with some interesting products we pass in the grocery store. Remember this thing that I showed you earlier? Uh, if you know what it is, tweet us at Great Day Houston. If you know what this thing is right here, and you can win this soda stream machine over here, which is really cool because you can make your own sodas at home, which kind of saves you money, and you can make any kind of flavor you want to. And then they're wonderful. Yeah, I they're have really one. good. Oh, yes, there you go. I of course do. you would have one the of those. Of course. All right, so tell us what this thing is. I'm going to bring this thing over here, right? There. There we go. <laughs> All right, Molly, we do have a tendency to get in a rut and buy what oh, we're sure. used to. And a lot of us will, out of the corner of our eye, go, I wonder what that thing is every time we go. <laughs> right. Uh, there's a great resource, great book that oh, has yeah. all kinds of things in it. This is, this is my go-to reference. I actually usually keep one in my car. So if I'm out at a grocery store and see something strange, I can figure Look it, it out. <laughs> exactly. Well, there's so many new things. We have a lot of access to wonderful new products that are very unfamiliar. And this is kind of everybody's go-to reference. It's like a thesaurus and encyclopedia and defines everything. Yeah, so. and the cool thing about Houston, though, yeah. is a lot of these foods are here are used by large groups of people. They just, we have so many different countries and nationalities right. represented here. Right, absolutely. So um, one of the things that I think a lot of times people pass up in the grocery store is this little tube of polenta. Yeah, see, I wouldn't think the polenta would be in a tube, and usually when I have polenta, it's on a plate in a restaurant. Exactly, because it's one of those things that takes about 45 minutes to make, takes a lot of stirring. Uh -huh. Basically, polenta is Italian grits, is what it is. Okay. Yeah, and so this, it comes in a tube, and actually not even in the refrigerated part of the store, mm -hmm. so it's shelf-stable. You slice it, you can grill it, you can pan saute it, really nice for any kind of meal. I used it today in combination with another unusual ingredient, which is balsamic glaze. Okay, and oftentimes you'll see that in an Italian restaurant. Right, and this is fabulous. Our wonderful flavors of Itali uh, that Italian balsamic vinegar that we love so much. It's just a reduction, so it's a thick and syrupy version of balsamic vinegar. Yeah. So it's really wonderful. Great to put down on a plate, drizzle over things, even strawberries and ice cream. It's mm, really good. Okay, on. and I love that. The fried polenta reminds me of kind of like a hot water cornbread in right. a sense. Right, exactly, exactly. So we just top the polenta with a little tomato sauce yeah. and there we go. All yeah. right, a lot a lot of us either don't know what this is or we're in love with this. I put this on everything. <laughs> I love this on everything. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the sriracha or rooster sauce, as many of us know, because it has this little rooster on the label. Well, it's because it's easier to say rooster than sriracha. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But very hot and spicy condiment, kind of like uh, an Asian Tabasco, mm -hmm. if you will. But what I love about it, it really has a real chili flavor to it. It's not yeah. hot for the sake of hot. It yeah. has some taste to it. So we use it in everything. Just, oh, yeah. you know, Buffalo on wings, eggs, whatever eggs, you got. You got it. it. I'm with you. Okay. Um, this thing. How many of you are familiar with this thing right here? Anybody have any idea what that is? Sausage? No, not a sausage. <laughs> All right. Uh, Molly, I know what it is when it's not in here. I've never seen yes. it in its natural state before. Yes. But I'm the thinking, tamarind, right? You're right. And a lot of like Mexican candies and things. Right. But it's almost like, have you ever had like those Sour Patch Kids, that kind of candy? That sour part, it almost tastes like that. It's really, so, really sour, but it's kind of addictive because it's like a kind of interesting Just taste. that sweet, that sweet sour yeah. contrast. Just a little yeah. bit of sweet onto it. Yes. All right. Um, what do we got here? This is mirin. Do we need to ask Steve about that? Or, no, uh, I, okay, I, I think you can I, answer I, that. I, I know. Okay, I just, know. Just making sure. <laughs> All right. So, it's, it is a, it is a, an Asian um, sweet cooking wine. So it's used very delicate in flavor, so you can't really overdo it, but uh -huh. it's in a lot of dishes. Um, really has a nice a nice taste to it. So you can even put it into sauces, into um, some salads, and to a little saute if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. And it's interesting because when you smell something like this, then you realize the foods that you've had have it in there. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, some of these things are just fun to get and try and taste. Yeah. I mean, just, just to experience the new flavors. Okay. Okay, panko. Now, if you say panko, a lot of people might not know what you're talking about. You right. said a form of breadcrumbs, then we right. get it. Right, right. Well, the panko crumb is a very popular uh, in in all of our cooking now. The Japanese breadcrumb is very irregular in shape, mm -hmm. so it gives a very crisp crust. So it's wonderful for everything. I used it today in uh, making some chicken breast, but I've also used it in frying shrimp. Really, really 
yummy, crisp, crisp crust, yeah, which so is just great. A, a better, a better right. breadcrumb than maybe your average stuff. Absolutely, not as fine reason. as some of the canned yeah. ones. Okay, yes. we're hearing a lot about coconut milk. Right. And we used to see it in all the like Johnny Quest movies. They get a coconut and drink all the milk and stuff. But now it's making its way into. I right. dated myself with the Johnny Quest movies. <laughs> Johnny, Haji. All right. So, but anyway, um, uh, we're seeing it make it make its way a little bit more into mainstream. Sure. And it has great nutritional value to it. It does. It does, although somewhat fattening. Mm -hmm. So you want to use good it. Good fat. Good fat. It's good fat. Just but, like an almond joy. But a lot of fat. You bet. <laughs> Keep saying it. With that good chocolate, too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you can also buy a light version of the coconut milk. This is uh, uh, very different from the... Uh, the coconut uh, syrup that you use in the pina colada, so don't confuse the two. But this is often combined, and I used it today in combination with a Thai curry paste. This mm. is red curry paste, so very, very hot. A little goes a long way. Just a couple of teaspoons went into my sauce that I combined with some fresh ginger and other things and the coconut milk to make a curry sauce to go over with the chicken. Oh. But very, very tasty. Yeah, are you yeah. staying for lunch? Absolutely. Okay. I can, I can make it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we love that. Exactly. All right. This right here is the uh, Chinese five spice. Uh, again, spices is one of those areas that there's so right. many things out there. We have no idea what to choose, right. so we always go to that same thing that we rely sure. on. Sure. And this is really delicious. I want you to smell. This has a lot of the sweet spices in it, so it has a little bit of cumin. It has Ooh. a little bit of cinnamon. It has a little bit of anise, some clove in there. Yeah. It's really delicious. And um, even just sprinkle what I did, I seasoned my chicken breast before uh -huh. I uh, coated them with the crumbs. I just sprinkled a little bit of that five spice powder in there. It's a real interesting, nice flavor. It's just something different. Yeah, it, it smells almost like what you would find like in some of the teriyaki like, yes. sauces. Yes, and so it's really, really wonderful. Would be great. Chicken, uh, beef, uh, yeah. pork. So that's how they do it. So that's so how they do it, and it's so easy. Right, right. All right. So uh, Molly, again, the book that can help us figure out yes, things. Yes, the Food Lovers Companion. This is available at most bookstores online. You can find it. It's just a fabulous reference. Yeah. And, uh, so when you can't just ask you Steve, everything. you just go ahead and get this book right exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Molly. Thank you very much. Thank you. By the way, we have a winner. Bob Sutton tweeted us correctly the answer to that ball of something right over there. It is celery root. Yes. And I what do we do with celery root? Uh, celery root has a wonderful flavor. You can, can peel it, dice it, uh, boil it, saute it. It has a wonderful flavor, mild celery taste. Uh -huh. It can be mixed with potatoes. It can be uh, in a soup. In or... a soup. Yeah, it's wonderful. Absolutely huh. delicious. Okay, I just wonder the first it's guy who walked pretty. up on this and said, I'm going to eat that. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't look like. I'm glad that they discovered it, though. They were desperate. <laughs> they were desperate. All right, Molly, thank you very much. And again, thank congratulations you. to Bob. He wins the soda stream machine to make his own soda at home. And for more on Molly Fowler, the dining diva, just go to greatdayhouston.com. And, of course, you have your show that you teach us all kinds of things. Right, on, so. all the right ingredients. Yeah. Right here.